Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. Today we're going to be talking about Why the Last Man, Volume 4. This is Safe Word. Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I'm your host, Brent Casina, And today we're going to be talking about Why the Last Man, Volume 4, Safe Word. Now, this is part of book two if you're in the oversized hardcovers or uh, the newer trade paperbacks this is the original one uh, this is my classic copy <clears throat> so before we get into the review let me ask you to please do one thing please help me and subscribe helps me out helps the channel grow lets you know when I drop new videos all that good stuff so why the last man volume four safe word so after three phenomenal volumes we've kind of come to where I think this series starts to meander a little bit uh, we get this volume here, Safe Word, and it's not quite an interlude or anything like that. It just doesn't advance the plot of anything that's been set up in previous volumes. Um, the main storyline, say the there's two storylines in here. First of all, the first one is called Safe Word, and um, the other one is called Widow's Pass. Pia Guerra does the art on Safe Word, and Goran Parlov does the Widow's Pass art. Again, with Jose Marzan Jr., a phenomenal inker holding down the fort on all the issues and I think that really tiles these ties these two styles together because if you look at Pia Guerra's Yorick and I turn and I show you Gordon Parlov's Yorick at the very end yeah there's a little bit of difference but stylistically it's pretty much the same uh, so that you're not really noticing you know that much difference of an artist honestly I didn't notice it reading it wasn't until the end when I was flipping through the book to try and get my thoughts together that I realized, oh yeah, there's two different artists on this book. Um, so that's a really good sign of uh, a good art team, a good collaboration between different artists, you know, all that good stuff. Um, the bad news is not only does this not move forward the main plot line, but that this does not have any covers by J.G. Jones. They are done by two different artists in this one. Um, they're still good though, they're still good, but they're not the classic J.G. Jones covers that I remember, so I don't, can't remember if he comes back later on, um, but these are done by Aaron Weisenfeld and Massimo Carnavale, who I've, I haven't really heard of before um, reading those names aloud. Maybe I didn't look at them, or you know, maybe they're not doing regular comics work then, maybe they were, maybe they're not doing it now, I have no idea. Um, so anyway, so what's in this book? Well, like I said, there's two stories. The first one, and they're both kind of the same uh, in terms of plot. You have our characters, our trio, uh, Yorick, Dr. Man, and 355 going across the Great Plains of the USA. They're somewhere past Colorado. Uh, in the second chapter, they end up in Arizona. And um, in both stories, they leave Yorick to his own devices. They kind of leave him by himself. They're like, hey, it's too dangerous. Wait here. And he kind of gets into a little bit of trouble both times, but at the same time, it's the same situation in an arc right after that, which we had just seen. Uh, the first arc, they leave him with a, another a former agent of the Culper Ring that 355 is part of, and she puts him through this weird... I um, can't show you that page. Uh, there's some nudity in here. This weird like uh, sadomasochism thing. Uh, she's got him tied up. Uh, she's trying to convince him to have sex with her. Uh, you know, in the end, she's kind of shoving him underwater. Uh, you know, all in kind of an effort to try and get him to realize that he wants to live and is no longer trying to put himself in danger uh, in harm's way in order to maybe try and not quite suicide, you know, but get himself killed because he doesn't want to live anymore. Um, the only thing this storyline really does is it sets up these Burka agents um, at the very end of the storyline and uh, I forget she calls them something the Capulet ring um, so Seto Seto Ket ring Seto Ket ring is what they're called uh, and that's really the only thing that's set up here we meet them I think later on in other volumes of course they're not going to be left dangling the second storyline we're in Arizona and there's a blockade in the road and again 355 and Dr. Mann leave York behind 
with some uh, mechanic woman who's shaved her head and is kind of gets York drunk and then somehow getting, they end up getting into trouble as well. And it's like, we just did this the last time. Um, so, and honestly, the, the, and this is the Gordon Parlov storyline. It's not that interesting because it's just not a, it's just a group of women that are being assholes and blocking it because they're fed up with conspiracy theories and stuff like that. Um, I don't know how it read 20 years ago. It certainly doesn't read very well today. And there's certainly some stuff here in the first storyline, safe word, that definitely is reflective of attitudes 20 years ago, I guess. Um, we're using the F word in comic books uh, 20 years ago, which I don't think you would ever really do that now. Uh, of course, this is written by Brian K. Vaughn, who's a straight guy or whatever. 20 years ago, it's probably okay to write this word. Uh, you know, the F word for um, gay people. I'm not going to use it here. But, uh, you know, certainly I don't think you would see anybody trying to use it now the same way that you wouldn't write the N word into a comic book if you were a white kind of thing. Um, but it is here. And the, there's also things, too, where they discover that Dr. Man is gay and they're like, well, there's certainly nothing wrong with that. Or, you know, just kind of the weird conversations that you saw in media and television 20 years ago. It's just an, uh, a kind of a weird reflection of how times have changed where 20 years ago when I read this, or 15 years ago when I was first reading it, I was not really like, um, you know, shocked or um, offended, but definitely reading it now and in this time period uh, in 2021, I'm going, oh, what? Yeah, you, you, you uh, can't say that anymore or you wouldn't probably wouldn't write that anymore um, or you wouldn't make such a big deal of a character being gay in today's day and age uh, in a storyline because it's kind of expected you're supposed to I don't know, represent a whole bunch of people and stuff like that. So um, maybe somebody more well-versed in these universes can tell me if this is uh, acceptable or not nowadays or was acceptable then or, um, you know, how this could be handled better or if this was groundbreaking in terms of its portrayal of people. Um, they're certainly not really trying to do any, like, trans stories, I think, as the, as the show is trying to do. Um at least at the time, I mean, 20 years ago, you were not hearing about things like trans rights or having them showcased in media or anything the way that they are now with um, Elliot Page, the woman from, also the woman from Orange is the New Black, Laverne Cox, I think is her name. Um, and there's also another actor who I saw on Shameless. Uh, he's in this new Why the Last Marion series. He's in... Uh, a trans actor, and he's got a—he's playing a, a part kind of like himself, I guess. Uh, but in this post-apocalyptic world, so I'm interested to see watch that show and see how it turns out. I uh, haven't watched it yet. I'm waiting for um, some time to watch all three episodes, but I will have that review up on the channel as soon as that is done, guys. Um, but in the meantime, we can read Why the Last Man and reflect on the greatness that is this comic, even though this volume in particular isn't that great. Uh, it's a little bit of an interlude in terms of some bigger elements of the plot. You know, we wrapped up Alter storyline in the last volume, and now we're, I think we're maybe just taking a breather before we get into some more heavy stuff in the next couple of volumes, if I do remember correctly. So, there you have it. Uh, Why the Last Man Safe Word? It's okay. Um, it's probably, honestly, totally skippable. Like, if you're trying to buy these in the older trades and you can't find volume four, I would say you'd probably be okay to read volume five and or read volume three and then read volume volume five after this because there's not a whole lot going on in here in terms of overall plot and storyline and stuff like that so yeah it's okay uh again these are quick reads you know you can read these in like half an hour or so which might make the the price tag feel a little stiff but um the story in general of this whole series is so good that i didn't really mind it when i was reading it uh, but if you're picking them up one at a time and reading them one at a time, you might be like, oh, that, that wasn't really worth, you know, this was twelve ninety nine back in the day. I'm sure it would cost you like 20 bucks now, the way comics are priced. But there you go. Why the last man, safe word. That's my final verdict. Let me know down below what you guys think of this volume. Am I missing something here? Uh, what has changed in attitudes uh, of, you know, the types of stories that are being told in here uh, in 20 years? Let me know down below in the comments, and we'll see you guys next time in funny pages.